Hi, my name is Mike with uh, Drive the Globe. This is my 1994 Storton Stevenson former army truck turned into an Overland rig that I live full time in for the last three years. I was lucky enough to meet up with Mike and his beast of an Overlander down in Baja, Mexico. He converted this 1994 Stewart and Stevenson surplus military vehicle into an Overlander capable of going anywhere in the world. He didn't skimp on the interior. The inside is surprisingly modern and comfortable. You can follow his adventures on his YouTube channel, Drive the Globe. He's planning to drive this beast across six of the continents. So let's talk to Mike and learn more about his 1994 Stewart and Stevenson Overland truck. Originally, I got into overlanding, believe it or not, I spent a year in Africa, uh, backpack, camel, train, you name it, going through, and I found out about Land Rovers. This was the first time I ever saw a sort of a typical Discovery Channel sort of Land Rover, and uh, when I got back to the States, I promptly bought a Land Rover, which I've now owned for, I think, 28 years, and uh, I ultimately, years later, I went across Africa with the Land Rover, but uh, that's kind of what got me into the overlanding scene in the first place. Uh, so I've built a number of overland rigs over the years. I've kind of done the uh, back of the truck, rooftop tent, uh, trailer scenario. And ultimately, I kind of settled upon this vehicle here, um, largely because I wanted to be able to go into camp and not have to do a whole lot of setup and takedown. I subsequently bought uh, the KTM motorcycle, which gives me the ability to move around and sort of use the uh, overland rig as my base of operation. So. Uh, it's just made it a lot more, for lack of better terms, it's just made it a whole lot nicer uh, and more relaxing on the road. So my current rig is a 1994 Storton Stevenson. Uh, it was a former army truck built in Texas. It came actually with the box on it. Uh, the windows, everything was sort of included. So uh, from past builds I've learned there's a lot of time and money and effort put into building the actual house, the habitat, the box. So this rig, all I really had to do was add on a five foot bump out in the rear of it, uh, build out the inside. So the truck is largely stock, although it doesn't look anything like it's camouflage former self uh, anymore. So one of the nice features about this vehicle from the military is that it's super rugged. It has a Caterpillar uh, six cylinder turbo diesel engine in it. Very common engine in marine use, in uh, school buses, all sorts of different things all over the world. It's got a seven speed automatic Allison transmission. So all of the parts underneath this vehicle are pretty easy to acquire all over the world. And that's what I was looking for uh, when I took this thing out on the road. So this vehicle, what's nice about it is it's full-time four-wheel drive. It, um, it, does, it has a, uh, a ratio where it's 70-30 normally, and then you can put it into a lower gear where it's a 50-50 uh, drive distribution between the front and the rear. Yeah, it is pretty rugged. I've taken it all over the place, uh, off-grid in the Utah desert. Uh, all over North America really. It is, uh, it's pretty rugged for being my house, um, but uh, a lot of fun to drive. It's easy, um, be, being automatic transmission, and uh, it's got air, uh, airbag cab uh, suspension, so it's pretty comfortable to drive. Uh, on the road, I did a swap out of my differentials and put in a highway gear uh, 3.07 ratio. So it'll go, I mean, the truck would go 75 miles an hour, uh, not something I would do with these size tires, so I typically cruise 60 to 65 miles an hour. It gets about 8 to 10 miles a gallon, so not super bad. What's nice about early uh, vehicles like this is that it can pretty much run on just about anything, so it's not very particular about what kind of diesel goes in it. It does not take depth fluid, uh, so that's an advantage of an older rig. So I definitely, uh, over the years, have sort of gravitated towards the older vehicles and on top of the fact that it, it'll run on just about anything it's much easier for me to work on I do a vast majority of the work myself one of the nice things about this truck and the setup that I built is that I can stay off grid for pretty much an indefinite period of time I'm limited by water uh, I have about an 85 gallon freshwater tank uh, as far as energy solar I can live indefinitely I was probably unplugged for a total of eight months last year um, never really run out of solar energy. I've got 1,200 watts of uh, panels on the roof, 900 amp hours of lithium uh, battery supply. Um, I can plug in to shore. Um, I can, and, and as far as the water part of it's concerned, I can suck water from a stream bed, from a well, from a domestic hookup, uh, you name it. I've got multiple filtration systems. I have an LED UV light 
uh, filtration system for drinking water. So in theory, I could suck it out of an African swamp and still <laughs> still survive, but we'll see how that works. I haven't got there yet. So ultimately I had left on a trip to go around the world. And I've been on the road for almost three years now, uh, of which I'm going on two years in this vehicle. Uh, prior to this, I had a, a Mercedes Unimog and a uh, Expedition trailer that I had custom built. And I found that I didn't like the trailer concept. But in any case, I had left uh, COVID hit. Uh, the world has been turned upside down from a shipping standpoint. So I've been kind of circling around and I've largely been in Canada, US and Mexico. And I'm just sort of waiting for um, the Pan American Highway and primarily the shipping between uh, Colombia and Panama and then ultimately Argentina to South Africa. Uh, my plan was to drive from uh, down the Pan American and then once uh, over in Africa, go up the west coast of Africa, head into Europe, across Europe, across Asia and ultimately Australia before I come back home. All of my adventures are online uh, at drivetheglobe.com and on social media, on every social media pretty much is at Drive the Globe. All right, uh, can we take a tour of this thing? We absolutely can, let's go. All right, let's do it. Hey Mike, uh, thanks for having me over to take yeah, a tour. Yeah, thank you Bobby. It's an impressive machine, so I guess let's get into it. We'll go to the outside first and you'll kind sure. of walk me around it and we'll do that. Absolutely. Uh, well, hey, you're standing in front of it. What, do you, what is this? This is my favorite piece of equipment on the whole truck. Okay. This is my grocery getter, my scouting vehicle, my just general fun. Yeah. It's, a, uh, it's actually a 2021 KTM 390 adventure bike. Okay. So, Have you done any uh, long trips on that or anything? Or uh, Not so much. A couple day trips, definitely. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I probably put 3,000 miles on it in the desert last yeah. year. And uh, I guess, so you're able, you got... You don't have any problem with it sitting on the back of the, the rig there? No, it rides on the back. It's a fairly light bike. It's like 375 pounds wet, I think. Okay, that's not too bad. So, yeah, and that's why I got it, because it's probably the smallest one they make in the Adventure Series. Well, I know that, like, you know, when, especially when you're putting on the bumper on a longer vehicle like that, it, you right. get it a little up and down, yep. and then you got to have a pretty robust hitch back yep. there for that. Yeah, I actually custom made that. So rather than your your single beam sort of, we put three hitch mounts in there. Yeah. So it's super stable. Okay. Uh, it doesn't move around. This truck doesn't even notice weight. You yeah. know, oh, yeah, whether well, it's towing or pulling or sure. anything else. Yeah. And then so I guess uh, you got like a little what do you call it? What do you just like a little storage area outside that you're dealing yeah. with here? I call it my garage. Yeah. Um, I only use this obviously if I'm going to be stationary for a long period of time. Right. So down here in Baja, I'm here for the winter, uh -huh. and and that's why the motorcycle's so key because I yeah. really go all over Baja on the motorcycle. Yeah, and the you, truck I just use as a base. Well, plus some of these roads down here. I mean, you, you can get anywhere in that, but you got to go slower. Whereas this thing, you can just yeah. haul butt and go around. With the washboard, this oh, truck yeah. is like you know going <laughs> five. Five, seven miles an hour. Oh yeah. This thing you can rip along at 30 or 40. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so then uh, let's talk about the outside of the rig here. This is fairly stock military truck. Uh -huh. um, I got lucked out. Uh, it came with the box on it. So it's a... So this whole like square area right here. Correct. So this was a communications truck. Okay. And it came with the windows. It actually had three windows on each side, which I deleted a few to be able to put more stuff inside. Um, the rear part of it there, that bump out section, which is about five feet where the mm -hmm. bed section is, right. um, that was added okay. to the truck. And it used to just have van doors in the back. Right. So, uh, was that, that pretty, worked. did you fabricate that yourself or? Uh, it? well, it was, it started by somebody else and then we, we kind of refabricated it and I don't have the welding talent. <laughs> um, so I, I had, uh, people help me with that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I understand. No yeah. problem. Uh, so then, I guess, I mean, how big are these tires here, man? I mean, that's... They are 48-inch tall tires. Wow, okay. Uh, this truck has a central tire inflation, which is cool, so okay. it's push-button from the cab. Okay, so you can deflate and inflate from the cab. That's right. Oh, so that's yeah. really convenient. That is super convenient, particularly in this kind of environment down here where right. there's a lot of sand and stuff. Yeah. 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 And then, all right, let's, uh, so let's, okay, what is this here? That's, I mean. Yeah, uh, so when it was an army truck, it was, I think they had all their hookups for sort of weird gear here. Uh -huh. I kind of repurposed this box. This is my outdoor shower uh -huh. uh, sprayer. We've got, you know, AC electric out here. Um, just convenient for when you're in camp outside. I spend most of my life outside. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, sure. Especially, I mean, it's good. a little hot today, actually. It but, is a little humid. Yeah, it's just the hottest day we've had in a while. All right, so what do you got going on here? Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. He's doing something stupid, yeah. I think. So I, I always like to tell people, just get out there, yeah. have an adventure. It doesn't yeah. matter whether you have a big truck like this or you're going along in the desert in a Volkswagen bug. Uh -huh. So I'm following with that uh, motto, uh, I am actually going to do the Baja Divide, which is a 1,700 mile uh, bicycle trip from San Diego back down here to my truck. 
He's, and he's leaving the truck here for, he hopes, a month. Well, uh, I think it's going to be a month and a half. month and a yeah. half. Yep. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to ride this thing fully loaded with water and everything. It's about 120 pounds. Yeah. Uh, obviously non-powered. It's yeah, not yeah, an electric no, There's bike. no batteries there's on this no thing. There's no batteries, unfortunately. Yeah. And yeah, you are going to vlog that though, right? I am. I'm going to uh, do a whole YouTube series on that trip, right. yeah. So uh, follow along, drive the globe, and you'll get to follow that. Plus, you can see him in his truck there. He right. says, I've actually seen some of your videos there. Uh, my favorite one probably is uh, you actually did get this thing stuck, though. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Last winter. And yeah, people ask all the time, like, you can't you can't possibly get this thing yeah. stuck. Well, you know what? <laughs> you can. You try hard you enough. Can. You can. And if you do, it's a, it's a long process to get it out. All right. Well, let's come around the back here and then we'll just keep on moving around. All right, so this is the box that you added. What do you got? Is this like bicycle racks or something? What is that? Yeah, exactly. I like to call this sort of my toy warehouse. Okay. So I've got four by my huge cyclists. Okay. So these are where I put my riding bikes okay. up on top here. On the roof, I usually carry the kayak. Okay. And then this tray right here is where the motorcycle sits. And like yeah. I said, it's got, it, it, it's sturdy. Yeah. Um, it, it's easy to come off. So if I, in a situation where I need a better departure angle. Yeah, is that just a, okay, so it's got, it's, it's oh, it's hooked into a few places there. Yeah, what's nice though, the side things are actually detachable. So they just pull out. Okay. You yeah. know, it's just resting on them. Okay. Uh, and then I got my little box here that keeps my motorcycle gear and, and whatnot in the back. So. Uh -huh. And then, oh, this is just the ramp then to help get the bike up on there? Correct. Okay. Now, to get the bike on the truck, I actually have a little winch okay. uh, with a remote control. So I can just walk the bike up with the winch, okay. which is nice. Getting it down is pretty easy. You just ride it down? Yeah. Or, well, kind of. No, I just, just kind of walk it down. Walk down on the brakes? I want it to be able to obviously be able to do this by myself right. if people aren't around. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Because that, I mean, yeah. I mean, even though it's a light bike, manhandling 350 pounds up here. Yeah, when it's this high. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be a little tough. You do have a reverse camera here. I see that. I do. I can drive along. I've got uh, I've got cameras around the truck actually, so I can see from my screen in the front. So yeah. it's kind of handy. Also, it catches a little bit of a view of the bikes and the motorcycles, so I can always make sure that they're still on the <laughs> truck. Still, I've, done, oh, I've done that. I keep our reverse camera on on too, and I've seen yep. our bikes like tilting over. I'm like, yep. oh crap. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Let's go see. Exactly. So, all right, let's head around. Uh, well, so oh, you got this hooked up to gas then too. Is this like your little yeah? So um, this is called a uh, this is a Tembo Tusk Scottle. Okay. And I do probably ninety percent of my cooking outside. Although yeah. I have a kitchen inside for you know bad weather or whatnot, um, I do have quick disconnects on the rear of the truck yeah, for, the for propane. Propane. Um, I'm running propane for cooking, for hot water, uh, and for um, you know the shower and heat. Right. On board. But so you're not using propane for your refrigerator like a lot of places. Correct. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm all electric based for that. Well, because we were talking about it the other day, like some of these people here, they're having a problem because they can't get propane right now. Correct. And all their yeah. refrigerators yeah. are running on, run on yeah. propane. Yeah. So. so I I have I carry three 20 pound tanks, mm -hmm. and I think last season down here I was down here for about six months. I only went through about a half a tank. Yeah. So I don't use a lot of propane. All right, let's head around the other side. Uh, the the port side of the. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> so I kind of built it like a regular RV. So yeah. the left side is all my hookups and whatnot. Right. I did, people ask a lot, I did put uh, powered awnings on both sides, okay. and they mostly are just to block the sun coming from the through the windows. Right. And it keeps it a whole lot cooler inside. Well, yeah, I mean, especially if you just keep a little bit of sun off even the side of the vehicle. Exactly. What's nice about the military truck, though, this is a, it's almost like a refrigerator box. It's like four inches thick, uh, aluminum walled, and it's got, it was came insulated. Okay. So I didn't really have to even insulate it, which was nice. Yeah, was it hard cutting through all that stuff to put these mounts, yeah? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> so you can see I've got uh, three Max Air vent fans on the side, one's okay. for the shower, one's for the bathroom, and one's for the hot water heater. Okay. And then over here, this is uh, water fill. So that's where the water comes in uh, that I can, you know, pump up or whatever from a... So your filtration is at downstream of the tank or is it... Before I've got the... filtration inside downstream of the tank and I, ha and I filter it coming in through the pump too. Okay. So okay. I've got inline filters. Okay. And then uh, if we come around on this side here, you can see my regular 30 amp RV hookup. Okay. Uh, domestic water hookup. I even, I even put cable in. <laughs> oh yeah, hey, you never know. <laughs> Not that I've ever used yeah, that. Yeah, right. But, um, and then military, being a military truck, it's like all your check things here. This is a people always love this. This is the dipstick for the transmission. But you can kind Holy of see. Holy crap! That thing's like <laughs> six, six, that's like seven feet long. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but you can check all your fluids um, very easily. It's always harder to get it back in the hole. Yeah. <laughs> but you can see, like, here's here's your radiator fluid. This is uh, oil fill, transmission fill. So everything's kind of. This is the air filter. This air intake here. Okay. Um, oh wow! Could, so you could be pretty pretty deep water too, then. If that's I uh, yeah, I think it's rated. I want to say it's rated for forty inches or something okay. like that. 
Um, but certainly in the desert, the dust, yeah. it, keeps, it keeps all the dust out okay. of there. Yeah. And then behind that, I have um, probably the world's loudest horn yeah, system. Wow, that's like six horns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's right by yeah. your head, though. If I blow that, you'll hear it that time in Cabo Fomo. <laughs> and, uh, and then on top in these pods, uh, which was nice, it was very conveniently located for the habitat. Um, that's where my house batteries are okay. on one side, on the other side is air conditioning. And then in the middle I do have a Honda 2200 uh, okay, so generator need it. and my propane tanks are there. Okay, and then so was that already, did you have to build this onto no. it? No, so that was also part of this, okay. which is not, that's why I tell people it's one of the most economical ways of building a large overland rig really is getting them from a military auction. Okay. And so, the trucks can, are, are fairly inexpensive. Are they? So, I mean, like a, a base truck, obviously, before you do any of this, I mean, what would something like that go for? They've gone up a lot over the last couple of years, but I've noticed um, auctions lately, they're, the, the, well, the ones with the boxes on them are obviously a little bit more. Yeah. But I see them 25, 30,000, okay. and you can get them. The ones without the box, probably 15 grand. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a lot of fabricating you got to do if you want to add that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you 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 probably spend at least ten grand just building the box, and then the other. I, I was estimating thirty grand by the time you add materials, because yeah. the metal is pretty expensive yeah. now. Insulation, windows, yeah, you know all this other stuff that it came with. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, and then I guess you just got a little ladder for storage up top. What do you got up there? Yeah. So up top, uh, mostly those are toys. So the, the the boxes in the front are like my cycling gear, okay. um, extra spare parts, things like that that I keep up on the roof, and then the whole roof except for a section in the front that you can kind of sit two chairs and I call it my little sun deck. Okay. You know, you can have, uh, you know, a cocktail, cocktail and some uh, Not cheese. too many because then you got to get down. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. But uh, the rest of it is all solar panels on the roof. All right, all right. Let's uh, move around to the business end there. So uh, the business end, the cockpit, what do you got going on? I mean, it's you said it was pretty bare bones. Yeah, so stock, this thing is just metal. Yeah. Green metal. Uh, yeah. It rattles, it vibrates, it's loud as anything. The seats were the worst thing you could ever sit on. Uh -huh. So I completely redid the cab, insulated everything. I think it's like four inches of insulation okay. up here. All this door stuff is all from Amazon. Oh, really? Um, layers, there's multiple layers underneath here of insulation and stuff. So now you can actually drive along, listen to the radio, talk to your you know, co-pilot yeah. over here. Um, I did install uh, air conditioning from a later model truck, same truck, but a later model, uh, which is nice. First truck I've ever had actually that air conditioning yeah. in it, one of these old old trucks. I imagine you could get pretty hot in, you know, in the desert yep. rolling around in this. Yep, my second fridge uh, is in the back here. Okay. So I mostly just keep, you know, water and, and beer and stuff stored in, the, in this fridge and use the other one for food. Okay. And, uh, you know, I've got the iPad if I want to look up stuff. I got a you know a navigation over here, um, backup. This is my backup camera and everything. So yeah. And then so you've got an automatic transmission here. Yeah, the Allison. Yeah, That's, I got the same thing in my rig there. So like, uh, do you have? I mean, I noticed you have the Starlink up there. Is it? Do you have it set up where it's in motion so you can look stuff up as you go, or is that? I don't have Starlink in motion. I yeah. um, I do have the mount stays up there, but I yeah. take the antenna down. I was wondering I'm about driving. that because I mean, you would think yeah. 60 miles an hour. That antenna is not exactly designed for that kind of. It supposedly it was rated for 125 miles an hour or something oh, like that. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, not, I'm not doing it. All right. And so. Yeah, well, nice guys, so, but you do have air ride up here too, so. It's air ride, and probably the most expensive part of this build, honestly, is these uh, German Schielmann seats. Okay. With, uh, you know, they got, you got armrests and everything. They're heated. Okay. And uh, they are super comfortable, so that's, that was something I wanted to, uh, you know, you spend a lot of, a lot of hours on the road. Yeah, 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 especially uh, 60 miles an hour, yeah. Right, sure. exactly. Stuck last year in Baja, and uh, we tried to, uh, we actually tried to pull the truck out with a 110,000 pound winch uh -huh. on a tow truck, and uh, ultimately the uh, one of the cables snapped. Ouch. Slammed into the front of the truck, made some damage here. Yeah. Hit the, hit the uh, turbo intercooler a little bit. Oh, yeah, no yeah, no, no real damage, yeah. but uh, in any case, yeah. Lesson, lesson learned. Uh, don't don't stand by work. those cables when you're pulling that much weight, too. It, exactly. Yeah. And then you got light bars. Yeah, light right bars here. here, just around, just so you can see if you're yeah. off-roading at nighttime. It makes it pretty pretty bright, I imagine. It's super bright, super yeah. Super bright, yeah. yeah. Cool. And then I, one thing I noticed the other night, maybe we'll have to get some B-roll later when you have it, the lights on, is you have some, like, uh, some effect lights. Yeah, mostly some those. I lights. mostly use those so I can see around camp at nighttime. Yeah. But yeah, they can, they'll go to music, they can change color, oh, really? they can do all sorts of stuff. <laughs> you got some party lights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, just okay. in case. Uh, take, take it to Burning Man. Yeah, hey, this would be a great vehicle yep. for it. Yep. Hey, we go every year, so next yep. year if you want to go, yeah, we're fine. Sounds we good. got a camp. All right, uh, so let's move around the other side, and I guess maybe just take a step inside. 
Oh, wow. <clears throat> so this is your spare tire? Yeah, so what's nice about this truck is that it's, the spare tire obviously weighs probably about 400 something pounds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it all comes down hydraulically, mm -hmm. so and, and goes back and forth. You can control that from these things. Also, it's hydraulic cab lift. Okay. So, it's so it'll lift the cab off. Really easy to work on the transmission engine and everything underneath. Yeah, the cab will just go, you know, up like the picture right here. Oh, that's cool. And what? Uh, so for if you do have to change a tire, I mean, well, you got a million bolts on there. It's gonna. It's a. It's a. <laughs> I actually have an air jack and air tools on board okay. because it's a full air uh, air system for the brakes and everything. Yeah. Um, so you can just so, hook an air jack up to it and pop it up and then... Yeah, pop it up, take all the bolts off. You know, you got to disconnect the, the air system here a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I could do it. I've never done it. It would probably, honestly, probably be a four-hour project yeah. probably to do a tire. Yeah. You know? It's going to take a while. Yeah. But cool. All cool. right. Uh, and then, so your fuel tanks are there as well. How much fuel do you carry? Uh, so it, this originally was a... Uh, I think a 58 gallon fuel tank. I expanded the back a little bit. So I think I carry about 72 gallons now. I would say that's the weakness of this truck. Um, most vehicles of this size usually have like a 200 gallon tank. Right, so you can go so, for a long ways. Yeah, so my range is still about, you know, getting eight to 10 miles a gallon. It's still, it's still probably, you know, 600 mile range, uh -huh. uh, which isn't terrible, but you know, a lot of these guys with big overland rigs can go over a thousand miles. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, let's take, take a look at your uh, stairs and step inside. Your steps here, is that, I mean, was this already part of the unit or? You no. To... So the RV door obviously wasn't on this right, thing right. and nor oh. were the steps. So I actually built the steps out of, um, well, I bought, bought this part, the, the scissor ladder right. that folds up, but this is um, off of a, a semi rig. Okay. goes behind the, the cab. Uh -huh. And then these are just um, stair uh, or, uh, you know, Oh, it's tool just, slides. Yeah. Okay. So when I when I want to move, I just slide it in there, and then this just goes right under the truck. And then you so. just take the steps off yeah. and put them somewhere. Yeah, so. Well, they just turn around. Oh, I okay. turn them around. I clip them on, and they slide right under the truck. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, then uh, let's head on upstairs. All right. Let's go. So stepping inside here, I guess the galley area. I mean, it's a, it's a lot. You know, you look, you see a you know monster truck, a military truck on the outside, but you come inside, it's kind of a modern design in here. Yeah, so I kind of wanted to make it, you know, a lot of guys that turn these military trucks into something that they live in, keep it like military looking inside. Right. So I kind of wanted to make it as homey as I could, mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, being full time on the road. So I call this sort of my kitchen. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a couple little sections and they're all uh, total 135 square feet. Okay. So yeah, that's not a, lot not, not a lot of room. Yeah. Um, this is the kitchen. It's a regular, uh, I've got a stove top. Got a, a decent size oven that I can actually make things in. Mm -hmm. um, above here is the microwave. Okay. And then uh, you know I've got a regular vent fan. And then if we turn around this way, um, oh, nice farmhouse sink. Farmhouse yeah. sink. I want it to be able to like actually you know be able to wash dishes right. and do stuff. You know, so a lot of times the sinks are just so small. And then underneath, I had to kind of custom design this, but this pulls out. And I've got a Dometic uh, dual zone, you know, fridge freezer, fridge, freezer. So fridge on one side and freezer on the other side. Um, and like I said before, I have a second fridge about that same size in yeah. the cab. So I've got plenty of, plenty of space. I mean, you know, with the farmhouse sink and all the tile and everything, but on a, on a rig like this, you don't really need to worry about weight, right? Because on an RV, you know, that's a 150 pound sink, right? Or maybe not. Yeah, my estimate actually is I, my build out probably weighs less than the military had in here in, in equipment. Yeah. So uh, I did wear, worry about weight from the standpoint of most of this stuff is fake. So this tile is, is, okay. is plastic. Okay. Oh, is it? Wow, um, it is. In fact, everything in here is kind of plastic based. I didn't want to use wood because of expansion and contraction yeah, yeah. a lot. So the panels on the walls are, are actually not, composite they're, they're composite. The floor is vinyl. The ceiling is vinyl. So it all is kind of faux look. I mean, the sink is real, um, but yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't know what the total weight of the build part is. I know the truck weighs about 21,000 pounds, total. Uh, fully loaded with water. Okay. Yeah. And so over here, I guess, is your kind of control panel for your electrics? Yeah, so this is the Renogy uh, MPPT controller. It's a 100 amp controller. Uh, this is a DC to DC charger. So if I'm driving, I can charge off the alternator. Mm -hmm. I actually have it on a switch because I very rarely use the alternator to charge. Right. Because um, it's even while you're driving, it's just getting solar. Yeah. Right? Um, yep, and then I elected, a lot of people give me some flack about it, uh, you know, how come you didn't put a split unit system yeah. in, you know, whatever, well, a split unit system is like six, seven thousand bucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, this is 150, 150 bucks yeah. at, at Home Depot. 
Yeah, and uh, it's small and enough in here that exactly. It yeah, might be cold in here if you're going to be stay cool in your bedroom. But I think it's six thousand BTUs or something like that. I can run it off of solar, and uh, you know if it craps out, I just go buy another one. Right. What now? What do you got over on this side here? So you got the big windows for airflow, and you got windows on the other side. Yeah. Well. So stock. The truck had three windows on this side and three windows on this side. I deleted two for the bathroom and the shower on this uh -huh. side and one for my wardrobe on the other side. Okay. But it is nice. Uh, they open up nice. So even when it's pouring rain, the yeah, water doesn't come in. Especially yeah, It came with screens. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of nice. I added, you know, the, the uh, blackout, blackout shades, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, this is sort of my kitchen table, I guess you'd call it. It does fold up. This is also... Um, an IKEA product. So okay. if you look very closely, all of these cabinets are IKEA. Oh, are, you, are they? Okay, well, they're good. One of the goals of the build kind of was I wanted to do it as economically as possible uh -huh. to show people that you don't have to spend, right. you know, half a million dollars um, yeah, on a big overlay. I've seen some of these that just you're like, wow, man, totally a million dollar, but yeah, you know, million dollars. Yeah. So I wanted to be able to show people that you could, you could didn't have to spend that much money. Okay. You know. All right, let's uh, move after. Over here, this is my, uh, this is my computer. So this folds down, and admittedly, most of the time, this is where I eat dinner, mm -hmm. you know, rather than folding. And it's kind of your workstation for editing My workstation, videos. editing videos, whatnot, um, on the iMac, yep. Yeah. And then you do have a TV here for... I do. And then you got these little chairs, for, or little stools there. It maximize the use of space for everything, so even the stools, the top oh, comes off, and you can storage. put junk in it. Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then, I guess your head is right here, huh? Right, so I wanted to have a dry bathroom. So mm -hmm. I wanted to separate the oh, shower yeah. and the you know the toilet really? room. So I went with the water closet. This opens up, and inside here is a cassette toilet, um, regular sink, you know, vanity. So cassette toilet. Now that's you have to remove it and dump it, or what? How does that work? Yeah. So this actually opens up. This panel pops out. Okay. And the, 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 it slides out. It's like a suitcase. Okay. So you can wheel it. It's got wheels. You can dump it in whatever you want to dump it in. You know, really just uh, any kind of bathroom or, uh, you know, a porta potty or anything like that. So yeah. it's kind of convenient. It's about, I think it's an eight gallon tank. So it lasts me about a week. Yeah. So I have to dump maybe once a week. So there's no black tank on board. Right. I have a 20 gallon gray tank uh -huh. and then the 80 80 85 gallon uh water tank yeah. uh, fresh water okay its own separate head and then moving aft is the different shower it's kind correct of, that's yeah. actually so it's a bigger shower than what we got in our it's already. actually a full 36 inch uh square home shower okay um glass door you know you've got the the full glass door it's also fake tile it looks okay. real but um, it's not, and it's a thirty, like I said, thirty-six inch pan on the floor here. So, so that's like a household size pan for one of those single. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then on the other side, and then there, across from here we have uh, the wardrobe opens up. So I've got hanging uh, for clothes, drawers that slide out, and then shoes on the bottom. Okay. So it's nice. And then underneath the bed, this pops open. I mostly just keep like you know extra paper towels, toilet paper, light light stuff in the rear underneath the bed. Uh huh. And then that is the bed back. Yeah, right and it's a full size. You can kind of see. I probably went overkill on the mattress, honestly. Oh it's man, like that's a, important, man. You know, it, it's a it's a full size you know home mattress, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I need a. I'm not that tall, so I need a little step ladder <laughs> to get in the bed. <laughs> okay, that's yeah, all right. Yeah, <laughs> right, we yeah, have yeah, to jump. Good. Yeah, Matt Max Air uh, vent fan above there. Um, I installed the uh, Arctic Turn windows there, which are nice because they've got the, the the shades and the and the screen that okay. kind of slides up and down. Yeah, yeah. So you could so have a cool. screen or a shade. Yep. Uh, well, hey, Mike, thank you, man, for thank uh, you, giving Bobby. me a tour. Yeah. Uh, impressive rig. Uh, I definitely. I mean, yeah, you can go a long way, and this thing can be off grid for indefinitely. Fingers crossed. That's yeah. the plan. So uh, follow along, drive the globe on YouTube or uh, Instagram, whatever you want, and follow his adventures. He's about to do a crazy ass bike ride. Uh, and then, of course, you got a bunch of videos about this thing. Absolutely. All right, man. Yeah. Let's, uh, Great let's... seeing you down here in Baja. Yeah, well, it's, it's a little early for a beer yet, but later on no, this afternoon. We'll definitely do that. All right. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you guys for watching. Please click that like and subscribe button. Really appreciate it. And if you like content like this, let me know. Because uh, I haven't done a whole lot of these kind of rig tours. But if you like them, I might do some more of these. But uh, really impressed. And uh, Mike's a good guy. Give him a shot. Uh, check him out on YouTube. Thank you, guys. And it's our channel members that make this channel possible. If you just click the join button right next to the subscribe button, it's just one monthly fee and you get early access to the videos and some behind the scenes footage. So thank you guys.